Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Rhode Island State House and Go Local News editor, Kate Nagel. Thanks for tuning in this Thursday afternoon for the latest in politics. We'd like to welcome my first guest here, Representative Joe McNamara. Thank you for joining me today. Kate, my pleasure. Great to be here. I appreciate it. Hard to believe it's just the second week now in session. Wow. Unbelievable. <laughs> Off to the races already, and you've already had some legislative proposals, yes. and I want to start with ones focusing specifically on academics and academic achievement yes. here in the state. We did see the results of the recent comprehensive assessments of the students across Rhode Island. And one of the bills you've introduced is to have folks look at attendance, specifically in schools across the state, attendance review teams. Now, I'm assuming this is to get a snapshot of where things are, are but to see how students are doing, we need to know who's actually in school. Wait, right, Kate, we can have the absolute best teachers in the world we can have the best schools in the world, the best computers and the best books. But when we look at our attendance rates in Rhode Island, we are one of seven states that have a chronic absenteeism rate of 20% or greater. More alarmingly to me is looking at our urban core, for example, urban high schools in the state, have a chronic absenteeism rate of 42%. Students cannot achieve, regardless of the curriculum, the books, the computers, the great teaching, if they are not in school. I believe that this is a problem that has to be addressed if we are going to raise our academic standards. And so let's talk a little bit about the nuts and bolts of this legislation. It's called attendance review teams. What do you anticipate this legislation will enable lawmakers to have the information? And what do you anticipate actions could possibly be taken from knowing exactly what the attendance rates are? Kate, having been a teacher and an administrator in an urban city, Pawtucket, for 37 years, it's an issue that I am familiar with very familiar with. Uh, the attendance review teams would be for schools that have a 15% or greater chronic absenteeism problem. And the gist of it is getting the social workers, the teachers, community agencies that support students together, identifying through data that is e readily available, students who have the potential to miss. We know who they are by previous behavior. We're going to be misses, missing large periods of attendance. And there isn't one solution that fits all. Mm. I mean, I've had other principals call when I was in Pawtucket and saying, Joe, could you just adjust this rip the bus route so these kids can get in? And uh, sometimes I'd work with Ripter, I'd work with those agencies and try to address it. And sometimes the problems can be more difficult dealing with insecure housing, mm. certainly food issues. Uh, I had one student in my school who lived in a manufactured home. Most people would call it a trailer. He was a big guy, probably around 6'3", 6'4", 260. He physically could not fit in the shower of his trailer. And so obviously, and when you're in high school, high school kids care about their parents. Mm. And he was just shattered. So he wasn't coming into school. What was the solution? A $14 yearly membership to the boys club where we got him get a locker, he could go in, problem solved, he ended up graduating and being very thankful. <laughs> so It's not a one-size-fits-all. It's fits not all. a one-size-fits-all. Yeah. Uh, Brother Michael Reese of Tides Family Services, he's an individual, and that is an organization that has been extremely successful in getting students who were chronically absent into school. So I think that if we want to see our test scores rise, we've got to get these students into school. And it was even, I spoke with uh, one of one socket High School's greatest English teachers. He runs, you, you may know him, he's also in the communication business. 
He runs the radio show Don Brunel in Woonsocket. And Don stated that he used to have four classes, the highest senior English class, the highest junior English class, and then he would have the lowest two classes. And he actually had to adjust his curriculum for the lower two classes due to attendance. Due to attendance. So we can see, and I'll, another example is math. Mathematics are built very often on sequential skills and learning the rules. Mm -hmm. Please excuse my dear aunt, right? <laughs> Sally, everyone knows that. It's the order of our operations. If a student misses that day, guess what? Their SAT scores, their math, their problem solving skills are gone. So attendance is a very, very basic need that, and it's something that we can address. Now that's one particular piece of legislation that you've introduced in this uh, nascent session so far. Another one is to develop new statewide academic standards. Now this sounds comprehensive, far reaching if you will, but let's talk a little bit about the genesis of this legislation and what you're looking to accomplish. First of all, we are looking to align. We currently have common core curriculum First of all, get a team together from the Department of Ed. Let's look at our standards and make sure that they are aligned with the Common Core. Secondly, let's look at our RICAST assessment and make sure that the Common Core and our curriculum framework are aligned with that. Thirdly, within, again, the cities, if we look at kids count mobility uh, statistics, we know that 20, up to 22% of our urban students will go from Central Falls to Pawtucket to Providence, depending on where the opportunities and jobs are. Those students shouldn't go from taking uh, pre-algebra part one in Providence to Pawtucket where it's algebra one or algebra two or geometry in the ninth grade. There has to be a statewide consistency of a rigorous curriculum that is somewhat uniform. It really hurts us when we have, it's like I ran a summer school once for classes and we opened it up to kids from outside of the district and students were coming in with these crazy uh, course titles. You know, like uh, basic math, pre-algebra part one. It was like the babble of curriculums. <laughs> so I think the state is small enough. We're as big as some school systems in the United States, single systems. We should have a consistent curriculum throughout the state. Now, there was some talk after the release of the RICAST scores about, obviously, the sense of urgency and the sort of state of emergency, if you will, about um, education here in the state. We had the opportunity to have Neil Steinberg from the Rhode Island Foundation on. Right. He's convened a group of stakeholders looking at a 10-year plan. But here's something that you're looking to accomplish, at least here in the short term. Do you think that these pieces of legislation get that movement going to achieve that end goal of where Rhode Island ultimately wants to be? Absolutely. I agree that we have to make a plan and stick with it. But A, if you can't get the kids into school, as I said, no plan will work. That's the first thing that we have to accomplish. Get out, go, not be on that list of the seven worst attendance rates in the United States. That's what stands out to me. Two, we have to have a rigorous curriculum that is consistent across the state. And with those two immediate functions in place, I think all ships rise with the tide. Well, we'll continue to keep an eye on the education front, but as we like to do here at the State House, keep you abreast of the latest. And one of the latest proposals from Representative McNamara is a text to 911 proposal. So we're going to tap from education to public safety. Tell folks a little bit about this legislation and what it looks to achieve. Last year I learned, and I was surprised. I mean, like other parents out there, I text my kids, I text my friends, and that's the way a lot of us communicate today. My constituents came forward. I was unaware of the fact that you couldn't text 911. And the constituent that brought it to my attention was a healthcare professional, 
a retired school nurse teacher who has dedicated her time to this particular effort. Why is it important? If you had an allergic reaction, you were choking, anaphylactic, swelling, you may not be able to speak. Text 911 could save your life. Heaven forbid someone mentioning a domestic abuse. You're hiding in a closet. Text 911 could be the savior. Also, as a former business owner, cash business, when I had my ice cream shop, you're always concerned about safety and you're being robbed or someone is broken in. Text 911, you can't speak. Home invader, heaven forbid a school emergency with an active shooter. Those teachers and students are hiding. And believe me, my former students can text with both hands <laughs> under the table or tied behind their back. And that's what they do. <laughs> yeah. So texting is critically important if that function of the 911 system is going to work. Let's bring it into the 21st century and use the technology that's available to just about everyone. And of course, I'm sure there'll be some price tag associated with it, but really, what is the cost of public safety when it comes to being able to enhance, again, a public safety option? I agree 100%. And if there is an increased cost associated with it, they should just come in and let us know, because I think we have the collective willpower in the House and the Senate and I'm sure the governor would support this, to make sure that our citizens can text 911 like they can many other states, including Massachusetts. Well, Representative Joe McNamara, I appreciate your taking the time to come here on Go Local Live to talk about your education proposals as well as your safety ones as well. I'm sure we'll be talking with you throughout the session. Absolutely, Kate. My pleasure. Okay. Great, great to be here. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. We're going to be back in a little bit as we look to the House Rules Committee convening again today. We'll have a couple of representatives back here on live. So we'll see you in just a little bit. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel.